Hello, you beautiful souls. Thank you so much for joining us today for this modality deep dive into anchoring into the heart. And so my name is Kelsey Corey. I'm an emotional fitness coach and the founder of Energy for Impact. And it's always such a joy to have these conversations. And today we have joining us the wonderful Ashley Mondor. <laughs> Oh, so Ash and I met in my NLP training. She was one of the support coaches. And in fact, she was my one-on-one -on -one coach. And so I can speak firsthand to the incredible impact that coaching with this beautiful soul has. It's incredible. And so Ash is a certified master coach, master NLP trainer, master, Us oh, I always forget how to say this. How do you say the reiki? Thank you. <laughs> Usui. Usui, that's the one, Usui Reiki practitioner and a heart healer. And so she loves working with clients to really help remove the roots of limiting beliefs, negative thoughts and stories and any disempowering ways that we can stay trapped in our subconscious minds. And so during the session with Ashley, it is incredible because she really taps into her intuition and she's going to do that today with us as well. And also calls upon the Akashic Records and pulls through any information from your higher self to help guide you along with what your spirit guides are wishing to share to really assist you in your healing process. And the beautiful thing is I love this. Ash describes herself as a spirited repairer of broken hearts and a seeker of lost souls. And trust me, if that resonates with you, you're in great hands with her because it is Asha's greatest joy and she radiates this effortlessly from her to really help clients repair deep cuts and long-standing wounds from this life and others. Past life work is incredible. And all of this is helping her specialize in making hearts feel new again. Mm, thank you so much for being in this world, Ash. Welcome. Oh my God, thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, I already know we are going to have so much fun, so much fun in this conversation. So before we dive into talking a little bit about anchoring, what it is as a technique and um, kind of explain that, give some context and then tie it specifically to that beautiful heart work that you do, I'll start by saying that anchoring is a technique that I learned in my NLP certification alongside you and I've really loved using it for myself and with clients really to help strengthen a connection with empowered beliefs when they come up and also as emotions arise through a session using this anchoring using this resource to come back to time and time again to help drop into those emotional states whenever we're wanting to really call upon that and it's such a powerful tool in that way so we'll go a bit deeper into how it works really what it is on a deeper level but I'd love for you to share with us now, where did anchoring as a technique come to you through NLP and really what was your journey to becoming the incredible coach and guide that you are today? Mm, oh, such a good question. So like you, I got certified as an NLP practitioner and then I like found anchoring and all the, the techniques and stuff and wanted to go even deeper. So I went to master. Uh, practitioner and then now I weave it in in different ways for tools with my clients but outside of that like I I can really attest to the work of healing yourself and in this journey of personal growth and and diving into your own self and coming back home because I was like way way out of alignment in a previous job like in 2017 it was extremely toxic super super painful and then I came across a woman who talked about coaching and working with women and helping them heal and she was like you can get paid for it and you can have freedom and it was from that moment that I was like I know that I need to do this so I walked myself to freedom and part of that freedom is learning about these tools like anchoring and the techniques that Kels has learned and and weaving them into coaching so that we together can go to the roots of pain of wounding of limiting beliefs like negative mental chatter to like pull the roots up and or shift because everything is energy. And when you shift your frequency and you are in alignment with your soul, magic happens. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I love that you walked yourself to freedom like that as a, as a concept as, and I know that for the members on the call, like we we're all in that right now. And that's the beauty of doing the work and, and, 
I think it's Ram Das says we're all walking each other home right and it's just this beauty of when we find our communities we find our our people that are doing this alongside each other I just kind of picture us all like walking and, and supporting each other and uh, cheerleading each other along the way so mm, mm, so beautiful all right, so why don't we dive a little bit into exactly what is anchoring? What is this incredible technique that we are raving about and paint a bit more of a picture so that it's a little clearer and we'll dive into it and kind of talk a bit to how it can be used. What are some of the benefits, yada, yada, and we'll, we'll go from there. We'll explore it all. So anchoring, it's, it's an incredible tool that helps you bring about a specific emotional state. And it does that by anchoring it, connecting it, to a different sensory signal. So we've got our five senses. So all of these can be used as anchor points, which is incredible. And it's, it's powerful because it's giving you that opportunity to say, okay, I want to feel joy, or I want to feel confidence, or I want to feel empowered. And you can tap yourself in, anchor into it, and embody that emotional state in the moment. So it is actually based off the stimulus response effect, which would be his dogs and the bells. And so anytime that somebody is in an intense associated state, so we know that's, that's pretty much jargon and I'll be jargon, but an associated state is when you are in your emotion. When in, you say like, I am sad or I am angry or any of these, like you're really embodying that emotional state. So when you are in that, and if it is an uncomfortable emotion, we're often, often wanting to switch that, as you've mentioned. And if it's an empowering emotion, if it's a comfortable emotion, one that we're really wanting, that's what we are anchoring into and creating a specific connection between the stimulus and that state. So we can create what is called a neural association, bringing those beautiful pathways in our brain firing and wiring them together. So Hebb's rule um, in, in neuroscience does state that neurons that fire together, wire together. So the more that we repeat the anchoring, the more, the easier it becomes to be able to drop into that state. So as I've just shared all of that, is there anything just in those explanations or anything else you want to drop in here? Mm, I love it. I think to emotions are energetic frequency, right? And so we can't perceive what we're not in the vibration of, and we can bring that into our state first. And it's a really, really powerful technique. Yes. yes. And it's, it's the beauty of it too, is the speed at which you can do it. And many of us have natural anchors that we have created and we don't even realize that we've done that. A lot of them have been subconscious. So for example, we've got music, like songs that will like take you back to a certain experience or a certain vibe or a mood and, and you turn to different music at different times depending on how you're wanting to feel. Um, we have different smells, right? And different physical environments are going to bring up different experiences internally. We have connection with different people. So all of these kind of uh, natural anchors that we've created exist for us to either lead us to feel really good or not really good. Like we kind of have them just naturally coming up in both realms. And so the other cool thing to know is that different actions that you do can also be anchors, right? So our habits. And I love to think about, um, oh gosh, I think it was probably, it was probably at least 10 years ago now, I took my mum to see the, um, the Australian Open tennis tournament in Melbourne and we got to watch Rafael Nadal play. And before every serve, he does this little routine and moves his body in this little way and it's really cute because he shakes his little bum <laughs> and before he serves. And that is one of those actions that is an anchor and helps to ground him and helps to ready him for that next task. So as you're hearing this and those of you who are here and those of you on the replay, reflect on what your own natural anchors are at the moment and those of which that are serving you and those of which are not really working for you. Because this is a really great opportunity to reflect on that. Uh, another fun little natural anchor that has evolved to share as well is um, my niece, Macy. We, so she's nearly two uh, and based in Australia, we haven't yet had the chance to meet. So we've been fostering our connection 
over the interwebs. And so we stick our tongues out at each other. Something that Arnie Kels <laughs> brought up, but that is like our little way of communicating and saying hi and having fun and being playful together. So it's really fun when we start to bring the joy into this experience and know that we can create these anchors for ourselves and be more conscious of it now to create those emotional states. Because whenever we do it together, whenever I see her stick her tongue back out at me, it just like washes me with this sense of connection and joy. So do you have any natural anchors, Ash, that have come up for mm, you? I totally do, yeah. a lot. I use a lot of visual anchors. So as an example, like I have reminders in my phone with affirmations or new belief structures I want to embed in my subconscious. So I have that go off every day and every time now I see it, I'm embedding it and I see it and then I embed it. I feel it. Look at it. So it's like a loop. Um, it's just like a little hack. And then another one that I love that I often, I work with clients who are like in relationships and there are struggles and we walk through, you know, communication, all that stuff, but anchoring in with other people, more love. As an example, I just had a client today where her love languages, if you guys are, if you know about them, it's like hers are acts of service and his are touch. And so they weren't speaking the same language, but when you have that awareness, especially touch, right? Every time that he would do something to support their family, she would love him by like kissing him and like anchoring in that high vibe emotional state in his body. I love oh, it. <laughs> that is such that is such a powerful point to make is that awareness that you can have to support others and co-create anchors in a way and do that and I'm glad you mentioned right the impact of the touch and a lot of the anchors in NLP that we learn is about creating for example like an association on a knuckle that when you connect with that and you touch it and you know, tap and it like brings about that emotional state that you have anchored into that point a lot of earlobe tugging can be another one and so we can have those different like buttons on our body that we use as touch anchors. And then also the visual, oh my goodness, yes, the visual, like knowing that for the majority of us, our eyes and our visual sense is so, so strong. I've got just over here to the right, having recently moved, I brought with me a range of different like postcards and pictures and photos and different things that are on my wall. And they are those visual anchors to those experiences, to those people, to those connections. So yes, thank you for pointing out those beautiful natural anchors that we have. <laughs> and one of them that we would, um, would be important to mention as well is our sense of smell. And this is one of the strongest senses to anchor with, particularly because it has a direct connection to two different areas in the brain that have an intimate relationship with emotion and memory, right? So what they're activating by going through, I loved when I found out that the olfactory bulb is what your nose is connected to inside your brain. And that's directly connected with your amygdala and with your hippocampus. And so knowing that a scent can kind of bypass your logical, rational mind and straight away get in there, using scent as a grounding and, and um, in NLP training with the mental wealth method with um, Jenna Knapp, the opportunity she has created scent stating. So really anchoring in with scent as that, as that um, anchor point to create positive associations, to create that uplifting vibe whenever you're needing it. So what's the scent that you use? As oh, an so good. I was going to ask you the same thing, obviously. Um, uh, for focus, my favorite candle is balsam and cedar. And every time I light it, I've anchored in now, like this is my focus creative time or I'll be writing. So what's yours? Oh, I love it. Um, from the doTERRA blend, Easy Air or Breathe is another is another name that it's called. It just like opens me up and, and same for that kind of like drop in and focus mode. So I love that we're both like that's a main a main scent anchor is to is to be able to get into the and it's beautiful to connect to that, right? Is to say, well, some of these emotional states, like you wouldn't necessarily say focus is an emotion, but it is a state, it's an attitude and mood that you want to be able to connect with and embody. So that's another way in which anchoring can really be supportive in, in life. I love it. And so that kind of ties into like, why would we be using anchoring? So we've mentioned it in terms of wanting to show up in certain ways and in certain energy. 
And uh, so there's a few different um, styles of anchoring in specific in the NLP realm that we use. So there's resource anchors, the ring of power and stacking anchors. So for example, I've used these for clients and, and with myself as well. So like the next time that you um, want to have a conversation that you know might be a little bit uh, challenging or confronting and you want to feel calm and compassionate and show up that way. So you can create an anchor that helps you to embody that. Or if you're needing to really drop into a creative mode and bring about that focus, and you're wanting to come at that feeling confident and relaxed. So that's a really beautiful one we set up. It was actually a scent anchor as well for one of my clients who was having a lot of procrastination and writer's block and getting caught up in, caught up in the head a bit when it came to creative time. Um, another one too, anchors are really powerful for when we're trying to fall asleep and you want to, instead of allowing those racing thoughts to take us away, you're wanting to feel more relaxed and at ease and like prepare the body to, to unwind. So different, lots of different ways. Is there anything as you're hearing me kind of share these, any examples for where you or why you've used anchors? Oh my God. My, so sound anchors, I totally have one that I use in my business. So every time I celebrate a new client coming on, I will play one of two songs. And one is like from Avicii. Another is I came here from love or came here for love because people now associate those high vibrational songs to celebration to me. And so it's really fun because people will be like, I just heard this song and thought about you. And it's like, that is intentional and it's love. Yeah. And then um, another one that I have is an abundance anchor. Like, and when I feel wealthy and abundant, I stack it, which is what Kelsey talked about, a technique that you can use. So every time I receive money in my business, I hit the same anchor and I hold it down and I just really feel gratitude for feeling wealthy and prosperous and abundant. I love it. And that, that sense of the stacking, right? So um, thank you for kind of explaining that a little further it's like you create it and then each time that happens in your life you're stacking onto it you're building that emotional experience and, and it's kind of like you're storing it away right and I'm, I'm just replicating your, your one here. so you're storing it you're connecting with it and helping to strengthen that connection and um so that's that's all the very kind of like positive aspects of anchoring but it's also really powerful when you're finding that you're stuck or you're caught in ruminating and often experiencing really unwanted and uncomfortable states. So this is where you can then turn to the collapsing or chaining anchor techniques, and that can be helped to release procrastination, can be helped to release fear and constant nagging worry and a lot of self-doubt and those kind of things. Any thoughts or comments or stories from helping people to release that, particularly when it comes to heart work, I guess? Yeah, I would say I see it often when they've anchored in lower level frequency, like shame, but a lot of it is guilt too. And so like going to the root of why do we feel this way? It could be past life. It could be, um, you know, relational, it could be relational. It could be all these things, but we get to the root and then it's like, what do you want to feel instead? And then we create the anchor based on how they would like to continue to anchor it in, right? So if it's sound, if it's a playlist of songs, or if it's visual, do we have that, like you have cards somewhere? That's what I've done. What about you? Oh, for me personally, the procrastination release has been really, really helpful. And I remember using, um, doing it with one of my colleagues in NLP training and finding that that just, it was like a complete, like I'd done a complete shift. It was just like, I, I didn't even, couldn't even fathom procrastinating. I won't lie. I have slipped back into <laughs> some procrastination ways. So this is reminding me that I could definitely turn to that and call upon, call in, call upon a colleague to help support. And that, that is the beauty too of these techniques is that you can set them up for yourself and having someone walk you through it and guide you through it. Like, when you get to, um, and I know many of our members also kind of wear that dual hat of being a coach, being um, a guide, being a service provider, but then also being a human in this world, doing their own work, right? So as you're hearing it, it's, it's important to remember that, yes, these are techniques and, and tools and approaches that we can apply and can offer ourselves to be held and supported with them as well. 
and taking on and embodying that client role and allowing ourselves to be guided is really really beautiful yay 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 well, even the way it. that you do that you anchor in every time you touch your heart right so it's like the self-touch and self-love that you do now subconsciously but I do that every time I have a breathing practice so it's like I anchor in the touch I deeply breathe to shift the frequency and you are anchoring in that it is safe to be you See, even natural. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Even just natural. Oh, thank you so much for mentioning. Oh, so, so beautiful. And so just to kind of, I guess, wind up this little section is to talk a little bit more about the benefits of anchoring. So I know we've been dripping them in and kind of mentioning them as we go. Um, the biggest, one of the biggest ones is that opportunity of empowerment and the way in which you can use these tools to support yourself to shift your energetic state when you need and a big emphasis that we have here inside the EFI gym is that power of you're showing up and you're doing this work and you're supporting yourself in only the way you can right like nobody else can be responsible for shifting your state and when we're caught up in the whirl of our emotions it can be a lot to try and pull yourself out of that and of course We can seek external support and we can use these different tools, but you are the catalyst. You are the one that chooses to create that change and to assist it to shift. And so this as a tool is just hands down one of my favorite ways to help shift it up. Like the dance party, the having a song in a dance party. I learned that one from you. (laughs) I love it. Did you want to throw in there, jump in there? Oh, I was going to say, also, like from a spiritual perspective, your your spirit guides will use anchoring, but you have to become aware of how they're communicating with you, right? So like if you're clairsentient and you feel things, they will anchor that in for messages. If you are clairvoyant and you pay attention to synchronicities, they'll send you like license plate numbers or angel numbers or whatever. So it's also not just for your human, but it's from your spirit and your guides as well. Oh my goodness. That is so beautiful. That is such a um grounding awareness to have and to know that you are being supported and when you can start to make those connections and tune into it and anchor into it it's just divine and that talks to another opportunity with it is that it does help you to increase your self-connection and the trust that you have with yourself and that knowledge of being able to help yourself and when you need to improve your performance and improve your productivity and improve your ability to focus, right? Like we all have that within us. I know today for myself, I I was very distracted. I was off in my head a few times and I had that moment. I've got a particular song that really helps to get me back into my body. So I took, put five minutes on the clock, go and lie on the couch, bring that song up and just come back in, settle back down and then go back into it. So. It's really, really beautiful like that. And one of the cool things too, I'd love to hear you if you if you'd like speak to the power of the the power of the ring of power to really help particularly enhance confidence. Mm-hmm. I um I used to actually really, really struggle with being seen in visibility. And even like at my NLP in the beginning of it, we would have like a microphone and we would have to ask our questions. And I grew up not like believing it wasn't safe to speak my truth. So I would literally shake and my voice would break and I would sweat. And I'm like, no one wants to go through that. No one wants to feel that. So I'm just going to be quiet. And through the ring of power and having someone guide me through it so I could drop even more deeply into it. Now it's like a really, really, really powerful resource. And then I paired it with scent. So with lavender. So some people use that for sleep, but for me, it's now um, like speaking confidently and being seen, super powerful. Oh my goodness, that is that is beautiful, and it's so funny too because I'm sure I'm not alone in this in this sentiment right now to picture you as that version of you, and to know that once upon a time this wasn't a natural, easy, flowing thing for you to do. It's just testament to the power of this work, right? <laughs> 
Congratulations. I love it. I love it. And so beautiful that you chose lavender as well. That's one that I use. It was um, my grandmother. It actually connects me a lot with my grandma. And I find that that's a really beautiful mood balancing one for me when I'm feeling a little caught up in my feels, a little in my sadness or anything like that. I bring myself back to that and often just feel her, um, her nurturing presence and energy around. So that's the beautiful way to be able to shift your mood with one of your anchors and particularly also to help release anxiety and help with phobias. Have you had any experience specifically with those? I think more, more fear when I'm trying to anchor in new belief structures. I do want to say too, from a spiritual perspective, um, you can have your past family members, if they were close, anchor in certain scents for you. Like for me, I've had my grandfather visit me in my car with cigar smoke, in my home with cigar smoke. And so that's anchored in. And it's when you smell it and you immediately associate to a memory, it's usually a spirit coming through to be like, here, I love you. You're held. Oh, that is so, so beautiful. Mm. And it's a powerful reminder that we are always being supported. We are always being guided. They're always there to support. I love it. And so are there any other stories or comments? I know prior to uh, coming into the call, one of the beautiful things that you shared was like, okay, I'm here. I'm in the energy of joy. I'm ready. And I'm just going to allow spirit to speak through me. And it's one of the things, as I said, that I've always admired about you is that you truly are and allow yourself and offer yourself up as this beautiful channel. So I'd love for you to welcome in any further stories and, and in perhaps even speaking to the divine healing work that you're doing with clients, utilizing these tools and everything else that you do around healing the heart. Thank you. Oh, I really let that land. Like your words mean so much to me, Kelsey. Thank you. I think especially around anchoring, I have hair in my mouth. Uh, okay, cute. Huh? sorry, <laughs> weird. Um, the Every session I hold with clients, it's in my highest heart to make sure that they feel so held and supported. And in order to do that, I need to be grounded within myself and I need to be connected to spirit. So I have a practice and a routine before I hop on each client call. And it's where I picture and feel the energy from my heart and from source connecting me to mother earth and then flowing up back to source so that I am an anchor and a channel for love and guidance and, and anything that spirit wishes to, you know, support someone with. And then I also always say out loud, I ground, connect and protect our energy. Please allow me to act as a clear vessel for love. And that's just my anchor to know that like, I am signaling to spirit that I'm open. I'm here for their, their healing. And then after we wrap up, I always take like a selenite wand um, which is a physical anchor and a visual anchor. And I cut the cords between myself and anyone I've worked with. And from an energetic standpoint, we're not, especially as healers, meant to carry the weight of the world and everyone we've walked with. We have to cut the cords. And so when I take the selenite, I'll sweep it over my body three times. And I'll say like, I clear and cut any cords between me and their name. And then I put the selenite wand down. And then as a like a vocal anchor, I always say like, I send them love and peace and prosperity and hope and abundance. And then I put it back on myself and I hold my heart after every session. I'm like, I'm so grateful. I receive love, abundance, peace, joy, passion, because it's an infinite loop of giving and receiving. And it's anchoring in that like, I am in my purpose and it is a joy and a pleasure to walk this and to support people who are bold enough to do their heart healing work. so fun <laughs> that is so inspiring and what I love so much about it is the intentionality behind it that each aspect of that little ritual and I love that it's like a bookend of every intentional time together with somebody sharing that energy like you're setting yourself up for success with it and creating that connection that energetic connection to begin with and protecting yourself and then calling in that support and then at the end it's 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 kind of the same thing right it's, it's the beauty of of consciously closing it out and and bringing it to that 
celebration, I know that I'm just, I'm just like, okay. And I can listen back and not note that down. And what were the exact words? And, <laughs> and then take it and embody it and create it for myself. And because although I do have a type of ritual, I love the depth and, as I said, the intentionality that you've just shared there. And I know that for the members on the call and, and watching as well, the replay that so many of us, and I feel it applies regardless of whether you are a coach or a guide or like any type of interaction that you're having with people, any type of role that you're playing in life, knowing that you're in relationship constantly and the energy that you give off is often the energy you get back. So we're, we're co-regulating, we're supporting each other. And when we are conscious of the emotional and energetic state that we are bringing to a situation, that is going to have a huge impact on the outcome of what we experience and how that interaction unfolds. And so in hearing me share all of that and recap all of that, are there any pointers or suggestions, advice that you would offer to people as they perhaps have heard what you've suggested and how you would go about kind of creating that as a ritual, as an anchor for yourself? Oh, I oh God, that's such a good question. I think one, like be graceful with yourself when you start this process, because especially if you're stacking anchors, like the point of doing it is so that you put in, in your physiology and your neurology, this emotion, and then you can come back to it when you need it. And so it's like, what is an emotion that you would love to move forward with? Like if you could have access to it all the time, what is that? Is it love, joy, peace, calm, and then mm -hmm pick because you're picking one and we're focusing on one not only can you stack it multiple times but you can stack it with other anchors right so like what's a sound you would love to associate it with what's a smell what's a visual anchor and then it's like you're creating this gorgeous container for that emotional feeling and at any time down the road you're going to hear the song and you're going to associate it immediately to that and it'll bring you to the state and i think part of it too it's mm -hmm. just a reminder that you are so empowered as Kels shared like everything is within you all of the emotional states you want they're there they're in your heart and if you're down what's the anchor that's going to bring you out of it right or help you shift you are so mm -hmm. capable and you have you have everything you need to, in order to walk yourself to where you want to be and anchoring mm -hmm. is just like a really gorgeous tool to help support you mm. so many so many wise suggestions and wise words there and one point that I want to uh, rumble on a little now is that you mentioned about the, the walking. I think that's really beautiful because often we're all trying to run <laughs> or move a little too fast. And particularly when we can be in an uncomfortable emotional state and we're, we're seeking and thinking that we need to be able to leap over to joy or love or like these these higher vibrations and often the shift is like that first step right it's like that that first step and that little that little moment of shift and it's like you don't have to be able to completely switch it immediately so is there anything as i say that that comes up for you in terms of advice for helping to get yourself even just that little step forward oh. Totally. My, a, a tool I give every single client who works with me is breath. It's like the conscious intentional mm -hmm. breath where you hold your heart and you breathe into your stomach. So one I always give clients is the four, seven, eight, and it's where mm -hmm. you breathe into your stomachs and, but you breathe through your nose, inhale and exhale. And so you breathe in for a count of four, you hold it for a count of seven and you exhale through your nose for a count of eight with your hand over your heart. And you do that two more times. So it's three loops total. And the reason why is because mm -hmm. it's dropping you into your parasympathetic nervous system. So if you're feeling some type of way, it's like, okay, let me come back home. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm just going to breathe and be really intentional in this moment. And for like my clients, I give them that tool and part of their homework or like love work is I have them put it in their calendar multiple times a day. That way they come back home to their breath. Then they can move from a more responsive place instead of a reactive. If triggers come up, it's like, well, I may not feel so tense or you're like, I need a moment. I need to breathe. Yes. That is, um, it's been a game changer for me, especially when I've like, 
if I've ever dropped in lack and scarcity anxiety or like I should be where I need to be it's like come back to the breath first (laughs) right totally so that's what I would um invite people to think about Sorry, I I jumped in there. I was going to say that should energy when we're just getting our heads and we tell ourselves how we should be. And yes, I adore that. The breath is that beautiful, like first, first responder, basically, with we have within us and we have available to us at all times. And what I loved is that emphasis on practicing it on specifically setting yourself some time and regardless of really where you're at at that moment the reminder goes off let's practice it so that your nervous system gets used to doing this so in those times of heightened emotion you you turn to it more naturally more effortlessly and that is that is beautifully a lot of what the emphasis of practicing and showing up and doing the sessions inside the gym the more you factor in these different nervous system regulating approaches and and train your and tone your nervous system to be able to come back into that place of regulation faster and over and over again the more you practice it the more efficient and effective it becomes and the reference of instead of being reactive you get to choose your response so I'm wondering, Ash, would you be open to guiding the 478 right now? So yes. we could all practice together. Oh, I would okay. love it. I also want to make one note before we jump in. Mm-hmm. Part of the reason why I want people to do that and to make it a practice, as you so eloquently talked about, it's I want you to always move towards love. And so when anything is happening outside of you and you are reactive, closing your eyes and breathing into the space that holds your heart that's the place we want to act from. That's the place we want to create from. It's, it's our home. Our heart is our home because it's the portal to your soul. So how can we always move towards love? Usually it's in your parasympathetic state, right? (laughs) Yeah. So let's breathe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I want you to close your eyes. I want you to keep your hands on your heart. I want you to slowly inhale for a count of four, two, three, four, hold, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, exhale through your nose, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and inhale into your belly, one, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one more, inhale, one, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And typically, because you're working with your nervous system, often I'll just sit there for a little bit and I will think about either I'll be grateful for things because that's an energetic state. I'll see if any thoughts or emotions surfaced if they're needing me and my intention or attention, or I will anchor in new belief structures. Like I am so whole, I'm so worthy. I am abundance. I receive an ease, flow, love, and joy. Anything like that because your subconscious mind is open as your nervous system is relaxed. Beautiful. Thank you for that divine gift. That was so lovely. Oh, and it is, it's, it's incredible when we do allow that activation, how, how the calmness just kind of like washes over you. I'm grateful that you mentioned gratitude <laughs> because I love to talk about gratitude as a bridge to better feelings. And so as we, as we're in our heightened emotional state in the discomfort of it, often as we, we turn towards feeling grateful for something in that moment. That's the redirection that can be the step. So to combine that with that practice, 
breathe into it, invite gratitude into your heart, express it. And it's been scientifically proven that it's impossible to be both grateful and upset at the same time. So it, it speaks to the power of the choice that we have to curate our state. And that's essentially the beauty of anchoring and why this tool is it's so powerful, it's so diverse, it has so many different applications as we've explored, and it's it's flexible, it's fun, and we can become more playful with it and create different ways in which we are making those associations and doing it in a way that really helps support, as you've said, like choose an emotional state that you are that in my mind right now that's coming up is that like that's your north star that's that's the big and that's that's the the direction that you're going in terms of coming home and whether that be love or whether that be joy or whether it's whether it's something like courage whether you're you're facing a lot and then maybe there's change maybe there's fear and there's there's things coming up in your life and then courage is where you're needing to be knowing that whatever that anchor and that focus is can shift and change as well right like as as the seasons of your life shift and and you change and grow that's the absolute beauty of it oh so as we move towards wrapping this chat up i know we could just continue on <laughs> hours and hours ash i would love for you to share with members on the call and those watching the replay what does it look like to work with you what do you have out there in the world how can they connect with you further oh thank you so i love love hanging out on Instagram. It's my jam. My handle is ashley.mondor, M-O-N-D-O-R. I post a lot around heart healing and things I've channeled through from like myself, source, um, other beings that I work with in my practice. Um, I really love, love walking through the shadows with people because it's in our darkness where love is. And often it's just seeing it through a different lens and, and having the space held for you to process. So in order like to work with me, I have 60 minute heart work sessions where we focus on the one thing that's coming up in your life so that you can shift and then take energetic action, right? Which is the language of the universe to move more towards your desired state, your desired life. Outside of heart work sessions, I also have a three month transformational program my favorite on the planet, obviously, because it's mine. Um, it's, called, <laughs> it's called The Alchemy of You. And what that looks like is it's three months and we focus on one area of your heart where you like really want to dive into. So people come to me for business where they feel stuck or lost or imposter syndrome, or they're not calling in the clients. Uh, relationship, people who are navigating divorce or who want to call in their soulmate their spiritual gifts. I freaking love, um, like what do the, what do those look like? How do I help people? Um, how can I tune in even more to myself? So every month we focus on healing that and then shifting and then taking energetic action in order to change your life. So those are the ways. And then connect with me on Instagram. If you want, drop me a message, be like, I saw you with Kelsey and I would freaking love that. <laughs> Oh, I just love you and your energy and your passion for it. It's just, it's super inspiring and you are a divine soul and I'm forever grateful that our paths were walking together and walking alongside each other. It is divine. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your wisdom, your suggestions, your knowledge, your experience with all of us here. We're going to bring it to a close now and have some reflection and connection time with the members on the call. Ash, I wish I could give you an in-person one, but uh, through the etherwebs, we'll have to do big love and gratitude for you. Gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>